Hello folks, I got a new camera. It's this. This is a Panasonic Lumix G9. This is the Lumix 8 to 18 mm f 2.8 to f4. And then the other lens I've got is a Sigma 30 mm f 1.4, which is gonna be sort of my B-roll, fancy, bokery y style lens. And then my general walk around vlogging setup will be this 8 to 18 mm It's nice and wide. I've got a flippy out screen so I can see what I'm doing and I can do some vlogging and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna go out, record some stuff and tell you why I bought this thing. So let's go. Oh. So I've come into my hometown for a bit of a walk. It's a bit of a sorry state of affairs, really, at the minute. Lots of closed shops, lots of COVID signs. Gotta wear a mask wherever you go. But I think that's pretty much standard around the world at the minute. But yeah, why have I bought a Panasonic G9 then, I hear you ask? Well, a few reasons, actually. So for stars, I usually shoot with Sony. I've been a Sony shooter for a while. And my main camera is a Sony a7 III. Great camera, really good, really good stills camera and a really good video camera, just not a very good vlogging camera. Obviously, there's no flip out screen, so you can't see yourself. There's no 10-bit recording, you're limited to 8-bit and there's no 50 or 60 frames in 4K. So it's a little bit limited in that regard. I do have a good vlogging lens, I've got an 18mm, but again, you can't really see what you're doing, but that does work pretty well. But on top of that, the camera, it's still worth about 15, 1600 quid. It's quite a lot of money to be carrying around with you all day, every day. Then they released the A7C, which I was really interested in. I thought A7C looks perfect, full frame camera, flippy out screen, yada, yada, yada. That'll do a really good job for me when I'm just out and about, want to take a camera with me and mess around. But then they released the price and it's like £1,800, which is just ridiculous money. So then I started doing some digging around and I came across the Panasonic G9. So it can do 10-bit for starters. You can do 24, 25 frames in 4K at full 10-bit 822. You can also do 4K 60 frames per second and then it can do 1080p at 180 frames. So that's all good. And then I found out that you can get them used for just 600 quid, which is a bit of a bargain. Flippy out screen so I can actually see what I'm doing and it seemed like a bit of a steal. So it's cheap, or at least relatively affordable compared to some of the other cameras out there. It has better frame rate options, higher frame rates in 4K, and better bit rates and you can shoot in 822. So what's the catch? Well, the only catch really is the sensor or more specifically the sensor size. So this G9 is a micro four thirds camera, whereas the Sony A7 is a full frame camera. Now, what does that actually mean? Not that much for me, really, for this sort of thing. So a full frame sensor is far better at capturing light in low light environments. You'll just be able to run it at higher ISOs without the shots being completely ruined by grain, but I don't really need this for low light, so that doesn't bother me. The only other thing is if you really like that full frame look, that really shallow depth of field, loads of bokeh sort of look, which you get with full frame. You see, this sensor is half the size of that in the Sony, which means that if you use a 30 millimeter, the equivalent field of view is actually a 60 millimeter. And if you use an F 1.4 lens, the amount of bokeh that you get is actually equivalent to the bokeh you'd get on an F 2.8 lens when shooting full frame. So you lose that, but that's it really. And for this sort of thing, for vlogging, yeah, I mean, it looks good in some B-roll, but it's not the end of the world, is it? And actually, I've been shooting with the 30mm. Some of that footage you've just seen is with the 30mm, shot wide open at 1.4, and it looks pretty good. You get a pretty shallow depth of field, and I actually think it looks pretty awesome. And 4K 60, slow that down on a 25 frames per second timeline. You can get some decent slow-mo in 4K with plenty of bokeh. Should look pretty good. So I've got a full kit, two lenses, 
extra batteries, literally everything I need to get going for less than the price of the A7C body on its own. And what that also means is I'm just more inclined to use it. I'm more inclined to bring it with me, take it out when we go for walks, shove it in my bag and have it with me every day. When the camera that you're using costs less than most people's mobile phones, obviously, it's not as much of a concern to you if you were to break it or you were to lose it. Obviously, I still don't want to lose it. It's still a lot of money, but it's considerably cheaper than the other options, which means I'm more likely to play around with it, mess about with it, doing this sort of thing with it. So there are other benefits to things being cheaper other than the obvious fact that they are cheaper. Hopefully you'll end up using them a little bit more too. done tiles collected they're going in our bathroom at some point and now while i'm here i'm gonna have a quick play with the rc car so you know a few months ago i bought the creighton i made a video about that it's turned into a bit of an obsession and i may have bought one or two more yeah Do you want to go for a walk? Yeah? Do you want to walk is? And so far, honestly, I'm really enjoying using this G9. Where's he going? Come on, Rolls. Anyway, and so far I'm really enjoying using this little Lumix. It's a really nice camera to have around, works really well for the video. Um, I'd heard rumors the autofocus wasn't that great, but honestly, seems to be doing all right. And manual focusing is really easy because there's loads of additional features, you know, like um, zooming in when you're trying to manual focus as well as the focus peaking, which just makes life much, much easier. But there's also a few other things which I wasn't expecting. First one, the stabilization is ridiculously good. So everything you've seen, let me just knock my exposure down a bit. Everything you've seen within this vlog has been entirely handheld and I've not used any stabilization. I'm not planning to do any stabilization in post for this. So everything you see is directly in the camera and it's done a really cracking job. Even just looking at the screen, you can see how stable it is. It's a little bit when I'm holding my arm out like this, but when I'm recording the B-roll stuff, it's super, super stable. Next thing, the amount of buttons and the customization is top notch as well. I've come from Sony where you can, you do get a couple of custom buttons, you know, you get three, but this thing is absolutely packed with custom buttons and you can make them do pretty much anything you want. So the functionality side of things is second to none. Honestly, it just makes life that little bit easier when you're trying to change settings and flick through things. Also having three settings options on the dial so you can quickly select 25 frames 60 frames just by turning the dial is really really handy as well annoyingly it's been a really dull overcast day all day today except for right now the sun's come out which is why there's a bit more contrast and a bit more pop going on so one last quick bit of b-roll and then we'll get home Well, 
there we go. That's the end of that. That's why I've bought myself a Panasonic Lumix G9. Any questions, anything you'd like to know about it, let me know down in the comments. I'm obviously gonna keep using it, recording with it, testing it, playing with it, trying to get used to it. So I might do a follow-up video in the future. If you enjoyed this one, as always, thumbs up, comments and feedback down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thanks guys, take it easy. Catch you next time.